This is an old Apple composite monitor from the Apple II days. This is basically a regular NTSC video monitor that they use for the early computers. And uh, this one's got some really bad controls. So we're going to take this one apart, clean it up, and see how good we can make it look. This time we have a, an Apple composite monitor. 1986 makes this one 35 years old. Made in Korea, I would suspect that this is going to be either an LG or a Samsung. And this one here has got some bad controls on it and just needs to be set up. So we'll pull the back off this one and then plug it in and take a look at the picture. And from what I understand, it just needs the controls cleaning and uh, some adjustments made. And the cabinet's got a bit of damage up here, which we'll try to straighten this up a bit. It's got a crack in it. Once the back's off, I should be able to push that back into place and glue it from the inside. And uh, there's another crack in the plastic on the bottom here, it looks like. Well, it looks like they've got some more screws hidden under these rubber plugs on the bottom. Be easier to pull these out with needle nose pliers. Much easier. Just like One that. thing to note that this has a Toshiba tube in it, and the tube was made in Japan, but the monitor was made in Korea. Um, maybe it's not a Samsung. Who knows who made this? Daewoo, maybe. I don't see any uh, any telltale signs as to who made it. I would normally think Samsung or LG, but uh, it's nothing obvious. It, they, they're not they're not giving away their secrets. I'm looking for like brands on the flyback and stuff, and I don't see one. Now the complaint on this is that all the controls are bad, and they are. If I plug in a, a video signal to this monitor before uh, proceeding, we'll show you how bad the controls are that need to be cleaned up. So this just uses the composite input, just like that. I've got color bar generator on. Plug in the power cord. And turn it on. You notice it has a switch on the front for monochrome or color, but uh, if we look at the controls, the controls aren't very good. I'm not turning the control, by the way. I'm just kind of wiggling the control. See what I mean? So the controls definitely need to be cleaned up. To access the control board, I have to remove the main board because getting at the controls otherwise is going to be kind of hard. It's under the picture tube. So the problem with taking the, the, the tube up, or taking the chassis out is that is typically what holds the thing up so it doesn't fall over. So you gotta be careful once I remove that chassis not to, uh, to let the chassis tilt to the point where it'll break the picture tube, which can happen if you're not careful. I'm gonna cut away one of these uh, tie straps. And uh, We'll loosen off the screws that hold the chassis in place. We need a long screwdriver for this because uh, the screws are up the front. Uh, there's two of them down here. I think it might be four in total that hold the chassis in. Two near the front and two near the way. Once these are removed, the chassis itself should slide back.
Now the chassis will slide out. That other screw is uh, still in the cabinet here. He's got to retrieve it. And I got to remove a few more straps, I guess, that's holding the chassis up front here. What's holding it up? The controls are actually on another board that I gotta remove, but I gotta remove this board to get to the other board where the controls are. Oh, we got a ground strap, that's what's holding it up. Let's just remove the two ground straps here. Okay, now I should be able to pull the chassis out a bit more. What else is holding it up? Something else holding it up here. Oh, there we go. That's better. Okay, now I can swing the chassis out a little ways at least. Enough that I can uh, probably get those controls out. They're mounted on their own board at the front here. And I just need to get that board out. Something's been spilt on this monitor too. I can see. It looks like, it looks like something is on the chassis here on the bottom of the cabinet. Maybe someone's spraying control cleaner in the front at some point. That's probably what it is. It's probably someone spraying, you know, contact cleaner in the front, trying to clean the controls. When to do this right, you really actually have to remove the board and take the controls right out to get into them. This is where these long screwdrivers come in handy too. When you need to uh, undo a chassis or undo a board that's at the front of the chassis. supporting the cabinet so that the, 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 the tube can't uh, tilt back because it could it could make contact with the uh, flyback if it were to you know, with the cage here and damage the, the picture tube so I always have to keep a hand on the on the set itself when you're working on these sets because uh, they're not that well balanced and it's really easy to break a CRT I've never broken one personally but the guy I worked with did. The guy I worked for did a long time ago. He, he uh, broke uh, broke a CRT or two. Okay, we'll just unplug the the light, and then I can bring these controls back so that I can work on them. And now, to, just for for safety for the tube, I'm going to just uh, put the chassis back in, and that will at least balance this thing off a bit so that it won't tip over. And so now, okay, now I can work on the controls and clean the controls. Yeah, you see this is exactly what's happened. Somebody has tried to, and i got getting cleaner on my hands here, but somebody tried to spray control cleaner in here. You can see it on the board. And they tried to clean the controls, and of course, that's not going to do much because, well, the controls, first of all, you got to get into the bottom of the control here to clean them. So I'm just going to use some Neutrol. I could use Deoxit too, but Neutrol is every bit as good, if not better, especially the old formula that I have. 
I have the very old formula of neutral that uh, hasn't been sold I would say probably since the 90s late 90s whenever they banned free on TF the old formulation of neutral use free on TF as their solvent and the newer version of neutral uses alcohol uses isopropanol alcohol or some other type of cleaner usually it's it's isopropanol okay so those controls are likely clean and give them another little shot just to make sure I have two cans of this stuff. I have one brand new can and this one here that is probably about a quarter of a can left, but uh, yeah, this, this one here you can't get anymore. Because the uh, tetrafluorethane is uh, a banned substance now because it, it uh, eats the ozone layer. So they banned it, but it was uh, one of the best cleaners that we ever had for electronics. So, okay, we'll put this back in place, remount this board, and then I'll deal with the controls on the back. There's a height control, a centering control, and a width control on the back, which also likely need to be cleaned up on this one. back in that plug for the as it be for the green light on the front. up the controls and get the two screws back in.
chassis back in. Get the screws to hold the chassis in place so that it doesn't fall out. Once one screw is in place, then it's going to be a little easier because the chassis is not going to slip, so you don't have to worry about uh, the, the, the uh, set tipping back and breaking the tube. That's always the concern, is these things are not that well balanced, and they can, uh, they can slip back quite easily, and uh, then the, the whole set can flop over. I've never had it happen to me, as they say personally, but certainly the guys that I work with... Uh, had a few experiences with TVs tipping over when they were working on them, and all of a sudden you hear this, whoa, 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 and then it's, ah, oh, crap. And then the boss would come in the back, he'd come storming in the back, and you knew that one of the guys, whoever did it, was going to have a bad day because the boss that I worked for, he had no, no sense of humor if a TV got, if a tube got broken. It was coming off the tech's paycheck. The tech had no say in that. There was no challenging it. So we all thought it was hilarious one day when the boss broke a picture tube. And that was a funny... He broke a Trinitron tube. And we all got a good laugh at it because, uh, you know, he got to experience what it, what, it, what it felt like. Well, I'd say I don't know myself because I'd never broke one. But my, my a couple co-workers did. And it ruined their day. Let's just say... And this is back in the day when you could rebuild picture tubes, but of course you couldn't rebuild a tube if it was broken. They had the, the rebuilding companies had to get them under vacuum. When they got broken, the phosphorus was typically it was blown out because when they rebuilt the tubes, they vented them slowly. They used a little tiny drill to drill a small little hole into the ceiling nipple. It would let the tube vent over the course of 24 hours before they cut the neck off. If you break the if you break the seal, the inrush of air is so is so violent that it will actually blow a spot, even though the electron gun and everything's there. Just the the velocity of the air entering that quick will actually blow a spot off of the phosphorus. So um, yeah, if the tube if the neck gets broken, forget it. The tube is shot. You're never going to be able to rebuild that one ever. Okay, now I've got three more controls on the back here that we'll clean next. And I can get into these controls right from the top here, so I don't have to remove the board for this. We'll just get the, uh, the cleaner in there and clean these three controls up. You can see what I'm doing. So we'll clean that control. Okay, now let's plug it in, see how the color bars look. Okay, I've got the monitor plugged back in, power on, got our green light here, and we'll see how the picture looks this time. Much better. Set the correct phase to get the correct color bar there. That's the right color, right? Actually, this set has a very good picture. I'm really impressed. We'll put some, I'll put some video on here in a minute. We'll look at we'll look at uh, what video looks like, but color bars are generally pretty good to uh, evaluate a monitor on. We've got the controls on the back for that's the horizontal that's the horizontal center and control height wise, and that's vertical hold. And looks like our linearity might be off a bit. So we'll find the linearity control and uh, adjust the linearity because it's, it's a little, the centering is off just a little bit. Hidden in behind here, there's the vertical center control. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but it's right between the pin cushion transformer and the vertical output heat sink. There's actually a control marked vertical centering. So we'll adjust that one. I'm going to turn the power back on here momentarily. 
Got to find my little red screwdriver that I just put away. Okay, I can reach through here and get to the centering control. And now I can adjust the centering of the picture to get the picture into the center of the, uh, of the screen. So the client wanted to know if I could fix the cabinet. I don't know if I can straighten this out or not. I might be able to, there we go, pop that back in. And I'm going to put some glue on this to uh, keep it from opening up again. Probably put some, like, just probably some crazy glue will do the job on this. Let me just get some super glue. I buy this stuff at the dollar store because it's cheap. It's like a buck for four of these little tubes. And it's the same stuff that's uh, in the higher priced package the problem with all this 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 uh, super glue is once you open it you really have to use it up pretty quick because it will uh, eventually it will uh, deteriorate and then it won't uh, stick properly so when you uh, these are all these little little vials here are all sealed they're all sealed and there's a little punch down on the top you screw the cap on and it opens the the vial but once you do that you've got a week or two to use up what's in the vial itself because it will it'll go kind of uh, tacky and lose its strength so I just opened this one up so hopefully it's uh, it's, it's in good shape still also try to glue this other piece that was off of the back cabinet. We'll try and glue this piece back on. Try and keep this uh, unit looking as original as it uh, can. So I'll play some video on it now. This is just off of a, my DVD player. It's got good brightness. Contrast control is working good. And it's got good color and the color balance looks to be pretty, pretty accurate on it. Got a great picture. Of course, just being a computer monitor, we can also put some text on it and see how text looks. So I plugged in my little Videonics uh, titler here. So you can see the titles aren't uh, aren't too bad. You can read them, and. Uh, I used to put this on. Now the phone number is going to show up on here. Don't phone it because it's not my number anymore. I haven't had that number since we shut the company down in 2005, I guess it was, when my business partner passed away. We shut the company down. So that phone number has not existed for a long time if it shows up here. But I used to, when I used to have to give out screening copies, a client wanted to see a copy before we went into production. So I would give them a copy on a DVD RW of their video. I would put on the, uh, I would put the warning on there and it would run repeatedly over and over again, um, throughout the shot, throughout the, throughout the, the, the video. And I would hand it off to the client so the client could view the copy and sign off on it before we went into duplication. That way, the client, the client had to make sure there was no, you know, no uh, errors in titles or anything else that could, uh, you know, cause a problem. And uh, it, what happened on one occasion was, I did a, a real estate video for a client, and even though I had the warning on it, they turned around and made a bunch of copies and were handing it out to clients. And one of the clients contacted me and said, oh, yeah, I got this video 
showing off this house and it had your phone number on it. So uh, that, that, I never did any work for that realtor ever again. But uh, I used to do a fair number of real estate videos as well as uh, you know as as other other stuff, other corporate stuff. But I will always put that on there just to uh, to warn people. Oh yeah, this was this is I set this up when I was doing the demo of my um, editing using uh, two SLH F one thousands. I've still got the titles. This thing holds the titles forever. Good old Videonics Title Maker. Here's where the uh, here's where that uh, centering control comes in handy. Right, you can center the the image. I was thinking of putting a monitor on my bench and just have this running in the background for all my videos to, to tag them. What do you guys think? An old analog monitor with just my logo on there or anything else I wanted to put on. Just generated by the old Videonics Title Maker. This old old Videonics uh, Title Maker 2000. I have two of these things. I have two of these and I have the original TM1 as well that was given to me. That was mine. I had another one and a TM1 that was given to me to uh, fix and sell but nobody's ever bought it so I'm kind of stuck with it in the box like new anyway this uh, little monitor here appears to be all fixed up so I think we'll put it together actually what I was thinking of doing is I have a little um, LCD monitor um, I think it's like a 12 inch or so and I was thinking of putting just some messages on it and have it mounted on the back of my bench so it'll show up on camera like tagging my videos but messages on there I use the old uh, TM2000 to uh, generate some some titles or some advertising for my YouTube channel that's the idea anyway maybe I'll do it maybe I won't let me know what you guys think because they do have a couple of old flat panel monitors I can certainly uh, put to use forget how this thing worked I'll run this through the wonderful. I had this thing sitting on my on my uh, my pants here, and the rubber feet have deteriorated. So now I've got black all over me. Wonderful. This one melted. Crap rubber. Yeah, I should throw this thing in the garbage. I'll run this through the demo mode on this thing just so you guys can see. This was their their spiel that they would. Uh, put these in stores and just have them running. It was actually quite a powerful titler and it was uh, comparable to any of the high-end um, like Amiga and so forth that, uh, that people were using at the time for generating titles. They're using a video toaster and uh, different computers. This Again, this is back in the analog days of um, when we were doing videos using, you know, VHS 8mm high 8, this is before DV, this was before uh, we were using computers to edit. A few people would have computers that uh, they were using for titling, using like the video toaster and so forth, which was the, uh, the new tech video toaster. And then uh, Videonics came out and they brought out this titler. The TM1 was the first. And then they brought out the TM2000, and the TM2000 gave you 
all the abilities that uh, it, you could do with the computer on the standalone box. It was fantastic. As you can see. Quite, uh, quite the effects that you could do with it. So I'll let this demo run through and then we'll we'll close off this video. Not a hundred percent happy with the monitor just yet. It looks to be skewed a bit to the left and not dead center. Last a lot longer than seven years, this thing has not been plugged in in probably 15 years, more, probably closer to 20 years, I, I, at least 20 years, at least 20 years. I haven't used this thing since I went to nonlinear editing, and that would have been uh, late 90s. This battery's been in here since 1994 and it's still holding all the memory. It's still holding all the titles in memory. It's never been changed. 
Okay, that's the demo. So I'll just play a little bit from another DVD. Looks to be looking good now. Centering is good. Scanning just to the top of the picture. This is off of a Super VHS tape. DVD made from a Super VHS tape. Ah, yes, we've seen this one before, right? Had the wide angle converter on the camera so you can see a bit of a bit of a border at the top of the screen. Uh, the uh, wide angle adapters generally didn't uh, do that great a job. You can see it here, dark corner, see, when I was on a wide angle. I think I had the telephoto was what it was. This wasn't a wide angle, it was a telephoto. I had a telephoto converter on the camera so that I could get close ups. But when zoomed back wide, you got a bit of the edge of the, uh, the converter showing. That's what it was. This was like a two times uh, telephoto lens on the camera. Anyway, this one is done. Black and white. Or monochrome, as they like to call it. Our color, your choice. You can see how much sharper the image is in monochrome, right? Turn off the color. Okay, we'll replace the screws in the cabinet. For those of you out there concerned that the glass might get scratched, in case you didn't notice, there is actually paper between the bench and the glass. So nothing's going to get scratched. And there it is back together. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.